from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. I'd like to introduce our presenters for this afternoon. Carissa Pastic is the descriptive description coordinator for the World Digital Library, also known as WDL, and is involved at all stages of the production process. She collaborates with WDL partners around the world, with in-house colleagues, and with contractors. She works with scholars and language experts in the editorial process to create the most accurate descriptions with authoritative metadata. In 2014, she received dual master's degrees from the University of Arizona in Middle East Studies and Library Science. Cecilia Peñalosa is the program specialist of WDL. As a main liaison between WDL and its partners, she steers communications for efficient content ingestion, monitors compliance with legal aspects of WDL's international partnerships, and reports on website user statistics. She designs WDL's promotional materials and pursues new outreach opportunities. Cecilia has a BFA in design, aesthetic philosophy degree, and an MA in museum studies from Johns Hopkins. Welcome to you, to you both, and I'll turn it over to you. Take it away. Hello, everyone. Welcome, and thank you for joining us uh, for this event, the World Digital Library, a free multilingual collection of cultural treasures from around the world. Thank you, Car Cheryl and Kathy, for organizing the conference and for including the WDL. Today, we want to talk to you about the World Digital Library and show you how to bring the World Digital Library into your classroom. Hello, I'm Cecilia Peñalosa, the program specialist of WDL, and I'm the description coordinator, Carissa Pastic. When you're done today, we hope you will walk away with a better understanding of how to use WDL primary resources as tools to support your students' research. In other words, we would like you to be comfortable searching using the main features of the site and guiding your students to navigate our collection. Imagine providing your students free access to treasures from around the globe without leaving your classroom. Your students can examine a 16th century map of Portuguese and Spanish discoveries. You can do that with maps from the WDL. Here at the top left is one example. We call it the Walton Mueller map. It's titled Map of the Entire World. It was created in 1507 and was the first map to depict a separate Western Hemisphere with the name America. The other atlas picture here is titled Islario General de Todas las Islas del Mundo, or General Atlas of All the Islands in the World in English. The atlas consists of 111 maps representing all the islands and peninsulas of the world and showing all the discoveries made by Europeans explorers from the 1400 to the mid 16th century. During the first years in elementary, students can be struggling with text and reading. Using maps or photos from WDL can lead to engagement and allow students to read these items instead of text. For some of those students, this is something that can boost their confidence and increase participation. You're probably asking how to get to WDL. To get to WDL, you simply type www.wdl.org into your browser, and this will take you to the WDL homepage. If, by any chance, you don't remember our URL exactly, just type World Digital Library into your browser, and you should be seeing WDL listed at the very top. Here you see a screenshot of a WDL homepage, which is hyperlinked to the site, so you can just click and go. The World Digital Library is a free multilingual collection of cultural treasures from around the world. The World Digital Library, or WDL as we call it, is an ac easily access accessible internet-based digital collection where you can find the world's cultural treasures. 
items showcased in WDL can give you a sense of the history of humanity, as well as highlights and achievements of many nations. Presented here is a manuscript page by a master of literature, Gustave Flaubert, the author of Madame Bovary. Flaubert fiercely worked and reworked his writing until he reached the memorable style that generation of readers have enjoyed. We can see this process exemplified here in his work titled Three Tales. This is the kind of treasure that makes WDL different and relevant. Our ultimate goal is to promote cross-cultural awareness and understanding. WDL is, in essence, a collaborative initiative undertaken by the Library of Congress and a large number of partner libraries, museums, archives, and cultural institutions from around the world in cooperation with UNESCO, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. The item on the top left-hand side of the slide is a papyrus fragment called The Curse of Artemisia. It is written in ancient Greek and dates from the late 4th century BCE. The middle item is one of the earliest dictionaries of Old Spanish and Aymara, one of the languages of the Incas. At the bottom left is an Arabic work by Avicenna from the Canon of Medicine. Avicenna is considered one of the most significant Islamic writers of the Islamic Golden Age. Partners may include institutions, foundations, and private companies that contribute to the project in other ways, for example, by sharing technology, convening or co-sponsoring meetings, or contributing financially. Currently, WDL has content from 190 partners in 81 countries. Our digital collection nowadays is composed of more than 12,000 items. Among those, manuscripts, maps, rare books, prints, and photographs, films, and sound recordings. WDL is not an encyclopedic library. It is a curated collection. Content on the WDL is selected by partner institutions in accordance with guidelines set by the WDL Content Selection Committee. Content is chosen for its cultural and historical importance with due regard to recognition of the achievements of all countries and cultures over a wide range of time periods. We are not custodians of the physical objects. The objects remain in the custody of their host institution. Let's take a manuscript from the National Library of France as an example. This is Reynard Cycle or Roman de Reynard its title in French. This is the most famous set of animal stories produced during the Middle Ages. WDL has the digital representations taken from the original object, in this case a manuscript, and offers it for download for educational purposes, while the National Library of France keeps the actual manuscript under their stewardship. WDL has legal permission to give access to the digital item, to offer a multilingual, succinct description of the object and its cultural relevance in, way, in a way that will be understandable for all global audiences. Let's go back to the home page. All bibliographic information or metadata, navigation, and supporting content are translated into seven languages. These include Arabic, English, Spanish, French, Portuguese, Russian, and Chinese. These are the six languages of the United Nations plus Portuguese. Portuguese was included because of the National Library of Brazil's um, participation as one of the original founding institutions of WDL. Translations are done by human translators and not machines. This feature lengthens and complicates site development and maintenance 
but brings WDL closer to the goal of being truly universal. You can toggle between languages by clicking on the language icon at the top right of the screen as is circled here. Let me clarify a, li a little bit more. Books, manuscripts, maps, and other primary materials on the site are not translated, but presented in their original languages. 128 languages are represented in WDL, including many lesser known and endangered languages, such as Aramaic, Nahual, and Cherokee. <clears throat> Here you see a screenshot of an item detail page or record on WDL. You can get to this page by clicking on the reference image or title of the item. This particular item is called the Tale of, of Genji and is often considered the first great novel in world literature and one of the best known classic works in Japanese literature. Added value on our site includes consistent, high quality metadata. Each item is described by a consistent set of bibliographic information relating to its geographical, temporal, and topical coverage, among other requirements. Often you hear the definition of metadata as metadata is data about data. This definition is correct. Metadata summarizes basic information about data, which in this case is the content, be it a manuscript, book, or print, Consistent metadata provides the foundation for a site that is easy and interesting to explore and that helps to reveal connections between items. Author and date created are examples of metadata. Clicking on the author here will take you to a list of all WDL content that has the same creator, which in this case is Murasaki Shikubu. WDL currently has seven items by this author, which were shared by National Diet Library, Library of Congress, and Bavarian State Library. Having the ability to filter through that metadata makes it much easier for someone to locate a specific document or to make connections between items. The metadata also improves exposure to external search engines. WDL has descriptions for each item. These descriptions are intended to answer two questions. What is the item and why is it significant? This information provides content for users and is designed to spark the curiosity of students and the general public to learn more about the cultural heritage of all countries. Here is a screenshot of the options one can use to explore WDL content. On the top left hand corner, of the WDL homepage, you see the word Explore. If you click on that, a drop-down menu will appear. Now we're going to discuss sorting and a free text search. Explore is simply a way of browsing the site using one or more fil filtering options. These options include place, time period, topic, type of item or format, language, and contributing institution. Each browsing session can be narrowed down using filters until one reaches the desired result. The first option to filter is place. This option allows you to sort content by the geographic subject of the resource. When cataloging, our metadata specialist uses modern place names in a particular geographic hierarchy, region, country, first level administrative division, and city. If the content does not deal with the geographic subject, for example, works dealing with religious, science, or mathematics, we use the region or country of origin of the author or where that person primarily worked to classify the item. Therefore, these items still exist and are browsable in a geographic context, even if they're not about a particular place. Time period allows you to filter by the date the item was created. Topic allows you to sort by topic draw from the Dewey Decimal System. Type of item or format allows you to sort items by format, for example, books, journals, manuscripts, maps, etc. 
language allows you to sort by the language of the content. Note that items with no linguistic content, such as photograph, will not be sorted using this facet. And finally, you can sort by contributing institution, which is just sorting according to the institution that contributed the, uh, the content. In addition to sorting, the search box, as shown here in the middle of the screen, circled in red, can be used to conduct a keyword search of the site. This is probably the easiest way to get an item about a particular topic. You just type in a keyword and hit enter, and all of the metadata descriptions and full text of printed books on the site will be searched. Let me briefly pause here to provide an anecdote. One of the teachers in residence here at Educational Outreach, Tom, described how he effectively used the WDL for a project with first graders. He used the website for a unit he called Long Ago and Now, which basically asks young students to compare their life with one of long ago. What they tried last year, somewhat successfully, was to extend the idea and add a geographical component to the project. They asked students to look at long ago in different parts of the world. They performed a keyword search together on WDL using the term children. Results included photographs of children from many cultures and places, including Guatemala, China, Hungary, and children from various backgrounds and ethnicities, such as Kurdish children. These photos are photos that these young students can easily analyze for some basic similarities and differences between themselves and those pictured. WDL photos and other materials are almost always more nuanced than a photo students will find in their textbooks on other or other online resources. And engaging this material encourages reflection that other visual resources may not. In order to illustrate our display and some features, let us first uh, look at an example for one item record of the book titled Women of the Empire in Wartime. This book is from our partners at the British Library. It was published in 1916 to celebrate the contribution made by British women in support of the Allies during World War I. To view the digital images of the item, click on the reference image circle here. Clicking on the reference image will take you to the item display. Here you see the item description in English, which explains what the item is and why it's significant. The feature highlighted here is great for a student. It's a tech-to-speech conversion, which is a function that allows users to listen to the metadata and description in all seven languages. Just click on this button to listen to the text. To change the item display to another language, just toggle between the languages using the language icon. Here is an example of the same record in Arabic for women of the empire in wartime or Nisa al Imperatoria fi Zeman al Harb in Arabic. Using the text to, speak text to speech function, you can listen to the description and metadata in Arabic. Again, just click the button to listen to the text. You may have noticed that the, the um, text-to-speech function button has moved to the left side of the screen. This is because the orientation of the language has changed from left to right, and so has the language interface. Display here is the same item, Women of the Empire in Wartime, in Chinese. Click the text-to-speech button, and don't expect that I will read Chinese because I don't. Now we'd like to show you the item display function. Again, you click on the reference image and you'll go to the item display. It'll take you to this screen. Once you've clicked on the reference image, each item can be viewed through the zoom features. Use the arrows at the bottom of the page to scroll through the pages of the book. Item detail will take you back to the item record. You can zoom in 
into any page of a book of any part of a map. To zoom in or out, use the zoom button located at the bottom right of the display panel. All foldouts included in books, such as maps, have been digitized and are presented with the zoom feature. Another way to discover items on the WDL site is the timelines feature. Each timeline allows users to zero in on particular time periods. WDL currently has four timeline options. These include Chinese books, manuscripts, maps, and prints, illuminated manuscripts from Europe, US history, and world history. We're currently developing a timeline for World War I to commemorate the US entry into the war. All timelines are curated. Let's look briefly at the world history timeline. After clicking on the war history timeline options, the first item that appears chronologically is the Dresden Codex. We're emphasizing the first date on the Mayan calendar, which marked the year 3372 BCE. Seen here is a small section of one of the panels of the magnificent Dresden Codex, one of the four surviving Mayan codices. To continue moving through time, Click and drag the time bar at the bottom of the screen or use the arrows to the right and left of the display item on the middle of the screen. You will encounter interesting dates and topics. This document can also be viewed on an interactive map. Yes, Cecilia, interactive maps are an extension of the timeline. What we wanted to accomplish with interactive maps was basically to provide a spatial representation of the documents included on each timeline. Here you see the World History Interactive Map, which, which as we mentioned, pulls from the curated timeline. You can use this option to see where these items fall geographically. The text box, as you see here, is the summary of the timeline, which you can close. Once closed, you can see the green circles with the number inside. Each circle and number represents the, the number of items for that region. You can click on the number to get to the gallery display of the items and click on the reference image to go to the record of that item. Alternatively, you can click on the region provided at the top of the gallery, which is linked to all items in the WDL collection that deal with that region. We're exploring other options for teachers to pull WDL content and compare with content from other sites and institutions currently. Please note now the helpful links that we are putting together for you. In closing, you can scaffold what you have learned during this presentation by continuing exploring and navigating the site on your own. We encourage you to take some time now to explore and ask us any question that you might have. We want you to know that you, Teachers are a very important segment of our, our audience. It is key for us to know that we are serving you appropriately and that we are giving you thoughtful and provoking content. It is important for us to know that you are st your students are engaged with the content, which in many ways depends on your own engagement with it. We encourage you to look at the site and examine how it can better serve you and your curriculum. Find the connection that might exist between your lesson plans and our collection. WDL is a research tool which needs to be used creatively. Remember that. And feel free to contact us at any time. We will be happy to help. Thank you guys. Now we would like to take some time to perform an exercise with you. We'd like for you to um, play around with the search function on the site. Um, enter www.wdl.org into your browser and perform a keyword search using the word children. Look at the results. Do you think your students could 
use any of these as we have as we have discussed earlier? Can they use these pictures and compare them to themselves? Would your students find this helpful? If so, or if not, how? What are the connections that you see between the life of those pictures and the photographs and your students? We trust that you are creative, that you will facilitate this encounter between your students in our content. That's a link that we need from you to help us to reach your students. So try to create a narrative that help us to showcase our content and help your students to get more knowledge about the world in countries. So are you guys um, coming across various ethnicities, photos, what type of formats? Um, what do you think would be particularly helpful? Do you think a print or photograph may be more helpful? Do you think a map could be more helpful? We are always amazed when we encounter teachers and they say to us that they are somehow complicated try to explain to their kids about the different religions. And we always uh, point out to them that we have wonderful Bibles, wonderful Qurans, and Torahs, that perhaps the idea to enter those kind of subjects is to go first for the artistic merit of the images. And that helps a lot because if kids get engaged in the image, it's much easier to jump into more heavy content. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Kathy McGuigan from the Library of Congress. Um, I'd like to ask Carissa and Cecilia some questions from the beginning of the program. Um, there was a question that came in uh, about um, the use of content and can I use the con content. Uh, can you talk about the copyright uh, for, for the items that on World Digital Library? Content provided on WDL is downloadable um, and can be used for educational purposes. This, any, any, any format of content, you can use a map, you can use the manuscripts, a book, all pages of a book and fold out maps um, are downloadable. Uh, this is Cecilia here. Uh, I would like to point out to you that our collection is growing. We make releases of new content every two or three weeks. And that means that sometimes uh, you might encounter not exactly what you are looking for, but this is a collection that is growing. We depend in many ways of the willingness of the institutions to share their content. So, but we are very aware of the needs that teachers have, so we're trying to fill those gaps. And uh, Carissa and Cecilia, I uh, have been, was recording the questions as they were coming through, so I'll give you a few other questions that were brought up within the session. And I know, Jason, you handled some of these, but we'll just, maybe not everybody he was paying attention to the chat. Uh, but Jennifer Abbott wrote, are print artifacts transcribed for easy reading, or are there only scans of the documents? Well, the, we use scans that come from different sources. And actually, um, with the Zoom feature, will allow the students to get very, very close to the material. So there's not a per se translation of each page, you will see the page and that will really increase the visibility of the entire book. That's another thing that we have to clarify. We don't have just one image of one page in a book. We have the entire book. If the book has 300 pages, the scans are 300. And back to the transcription issue. Um, transcriptions are only provided in extremely famous works. Otherwise, we will not provide transcriptions of these items. 
Great. You just don't have the resources to uh, to do that. Great. Okay, I've been forwarded a couple other questions, and I'm if it's okay, I'm going to go ahead and ask those to you now too. How about what are some of the most viewed or downloaded resources? I would say that one of the most popular right now is the Florentine Codex. Um, we have a very important collection of Mesoamerican codices, and we needed uh, the last one, let's say the codex that was written in the last part of the Aztec Empire. And uh, we got it after a long negotiation with uh, Laurenciana, a, a library in Italy. And uh, we scanned all the pages, and those volumes are extremely, extremely uh, solicited by teachers and actually academics also, because it's the first time it's available online to be seen and studied. Cool, thank you. I think we have time for a few more questions. Oh, here uh, Desiree asks, is there a way to request documents or recordings that you don't currently have? Well, uh, we receive suggestions, but as I said before, we depend on the institutions that we are negotiating to get scans from. Now, if the teachers wanted to let us know that they are very interested in certain items, of course, we will welcome that suggestion and try to negotiate for you to get the scans um, in the description, which is the most important part in the seven languages. It's a complicated work, but we love it. So we will make the best of trying to get you the content that you need. We do have certain content that we prioritize, such as Mesoamerican codices, um, Chinese rare books. So um, we do encourage our partners to um, donate these types of materials and sometimes seek it out um, if need be. Great. Okay, here's another question that's coming in, and I'll type it as I'm speaking. But as you work with teachers, are you learning particular strategies that teachers are often using with this content? Like, in other words, how are they? How are teachers around the world using the World Digital Library, and what seems to be working best for them? That is a good question. Um, we try to learn a lot from the feedback we get in webinars such as this one. Um, and talk with the teachers and residents here at Education Outreach to learn how teachers are using these in their classrooms, learn how they, learn how they use our site. So we really depend on you in a forum such as this to, to respond and let us know. Um, we hope that you can perhaps identify gaps in our timeline or gaps in our content and let us know. Feel free to email us, um, tweet us and let us know where these gaps exist, how we can better fulfill things that will work with your curriculum. Um, so uh, please respond, let us know. And a related question came in, do you have teachers using this content all over the world? Yes, most definitely. We can hear from them, from Paraguay, from uh, Albania, we can hear teachers that write from, to us from Russia. Uh, it's quite amazing for us. Uh, sometimes we're not totally aware of the access that we have to these remote places in the world. So yes, we have responses uh, from teachers from all over the place. And uh, that's very, very exciting. And we can track our users. Of course, we can't tell you know, if our users are um, a teacher or uh, what their profession is, but we can track them. And right now, our number one uh, user by country is China. That's very interesting. A related, uh, different question came in. I'll type it in. This really has to do with the digitization. Is did it, you know we know you digitize resources from all over the world. Is did, did, digitization ever a problem in places like the third world where resources may not be as available? Yes, that's a great question, and the answer is yes. There is very much a different uh, level of financial 
uh, possibilities for people who are in Africa and uh, South America, Central America, even part of the India. So we do are we we are aware of those problems, and at that point you have to talk with uh, educational ministers uh, with consortiums that uh, found those kind of um, initiative or projects because universities sometimes do a lot of that. We here, where we work, we don't digitize. We have some centers for digitization and that helps us a lot to go by areas. Uh, but definitely in Africa, for example, we have a lot to do and to teach them how to digitize with the standards that we need because sometimes we receive things that we really cannot put in our site because it will not be using all the resources that we have because the scans are too weak, because they are totally imperfect. So there's a lot of capacity building to be done and we are very aware and working on that area. Our major um, locations that we focused on is Iraq, Uganda, and Egypt. For capacity building, that is. I noticed that Cuddy asks specifically about projects uh, underway in India. I believe Cuddy's from India. We currently have one partner in India and in Kashmir, um, but we are currently working to recruit other partners and would love to have more partners in India. In, on a related note, let's say somebody like Cuddy wanted to um, help you guys out. Could could she do that as an educator? Well, if she has any connection with the National Library, for example, she can put us in contact with them and tell them about our initiative. Of course, um, some people ask also if we will be adding new languages, for example. And yes, it's a goal, but we are working with the resources that we have right now. We would love to have more languages. Uh, and that's a lot of work for the translators, for the editors, but uh, most definitely for to accomplish the mission to be universal, uh, we need to have more languages. So if India is one of the content, uh, the con the countries that we would like to have, yes. And we do have a lot of content about India. We have actually the Constitution of India. Well, great. Um, this is uh, fascinating. We unfortunately are just about at the end of our time. So, uh, Chris or Cecilia, do you have any final words uh, before I kind of do my final housekeeping? I just wanted to reinforce that we recognize that teachers are indeed one of the most important segments of our audience and we um, rely heavily on their feedback um, to better our site and to um, select content. So please, I encourage you to respond um, here in the chat room, respond via tweet any way you can, be interactive and let us know how we can better serve you. And just now, a thank you, a big thank you for all of you for the attention. And please come back to our site and explore what is going on there. Thank you. Thank you. I second, I second that. Thank you to Carissa and Cecilia for a wonderful presentation and for everybody who joined um, as attendees as well. Um, we would love to have your feedback. If you look at the, con uh, the content on the slide right now, there's a link. You can click on that uh, survey link and please take a few moments and uh, provide a very helpful feedback to us on the presentation. Um, you will also receive an email within five business days with directions to access a certificate for one instructional hour in case you want to use this session as you know continuing education units. Um, that's, that's something that you could do as well. Um, Thanks again, everybody, for joining us. Good night. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.